quorum, we'll go ahead and get started. Madam Clerk, if you would read the uh, roll. Councilmember Fox. Here. Councilmember Lalloway and Schott are noted absent at this time. Mayor Pro Tem Porsche. Yes. Mayor Wagner. I'm here. Um, all right, we are interested in getting going because um, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Shea has a uh, uh, pre-existing commitment um, when this agenda was a little lighter than uh, it has become. And so I want to try to get as much done while we have uh, her here as well. So um, let's move, uh, move on and uh, let me ask um, our city attorney to read the items that will be taken up in closed session. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We have uh, one item on for closed session consideration tonight. That's a conference with real property negotiators under government code section 54956.8. The property involved is an approximately 4.61 acre property at 17352 Darien Avenue. The agency negotiators are Mariana Marsheva, the assistant city manager, Lori Hoffman, the director of community services, Pete Carmichael, the director of community development, and the interim director of the Orange County Great Park, and Darlene Nicondro, the project development administrator. Negotiating parties are the City of Irvine and MDD Darien 2 LP. Under negotiation are the price in terms of payment, and that's all. All right, thank you uh, very much, Madam Clerk. Any requests to speak on closed session items? No, Mayor. All right, thank you. It is uh, five or uh, four fifteen. We're going to go into closed session. Five o'clock, do we think? Is it earlier? Oh, Early. All right, let, we'll shoot for five uh, for four forty-five to reconvene for uh, open session. All right, thank you all. Um, a quick housekeeping uh, detail. We understand Council Member Schott will not be here today and Council Member Lalloway has not yet responded to uh, texts and phone calls. If he shows up, great. If he doesn't, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Shea has to leave for a uh, prior engagement, which would uh, deprive us of a quorum. And so we will do as much business as we can. And then um, um, we will stop when we are out of a quorum and required by law to stop. So with that said, it is 546. We are back on the regular city council uh, agenda. The meeting is reconvened. And let me turn to the city attorney to read out items that were uh, of action taken in closed session. We have no reportable action this evening, Mayor. All right, thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, those who are able and willing to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you would stand, and then remain standing for tonight's invocation, and I will lead the pledge this evening. And it is my pleasure tonight to welcome forward Pastor uh, Mike Anderson from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Irvine for this evening's invocation. Pastor Anderson. Thank you for allowing me to pray tonight. Let me pray. Gracious God, we come before you today to lift up the city council and our mayor as they meet today. We thank you for their civic service. We pray that you would guide them by your hand to discuss the issues related to the betterment of our city. Specifically, we pray for all the children in our schools, that they would receive education to be the next leaders in our country. We pray for the elections coming up, that you would guide us to elect those most qualified for the goals and issues facing our city. We pray for those who protect us, our policemen, our firemen, our rescue workers, and all those who work for the sa uh, safety of our citizens. We pray for a balance of growing and inviting people from other cultures and those who wish to live here, uh, a place where they can uh, prosper and provide uh, to uh, Irvine and, and beyond. We pray for the poor, the homeless, those who are sick. We pray for single parents who struggle to make it. May they be given help and support to obtain the basic human services and opportunities to provide for themselves. We lift up all these requests to you and anything else on our heart tonight, and we lift it up in, in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Welcome. Anderson. Thank and you. you may be seated. All right, at this time I'd like to invite forward uh, Wendy Bakota and the uh, partners of the Irvine Prevention Coalition to come forward. 
There we are. And tight quarters. Let's let's all fit in here as best we can. And uh, this is in connection with Red Ribbon Week. In 1985, the tragic death of Drug Enforcement Agent Enrique Camarena, while working as part of an undercover assignment in Mexico, sparked a community response that led to the first national Red Ribbon celebration in 1988. The goal of Red Ribbon Week is to increase awareness regarding the need for ongoing alcohol, tobacco, and other drug and violence prevention uh, education in our schools and in our community. Because of the efforts of the Irvine Prevention Coalition and other vital community partners, the Irvine community continues to be a leader in the Red Ribbon Celebration Campaign by offering training, guidance, and technical assistance to school site prevention coordinators in Orange County and nationally. On behalf of the residents of the City of Irvine and the entire Irvine City Council, I would like to thank all the members of the Irvine Prevention Coalition for their efforts and to officially recognize Red Ribbon Week with a proclamation. It is here. It is detailed. I will not go into all the great whereas's and the good work that's done. Let me just conclude, whereas the city of Irvine further commits resources to ensure the success of the Red, Red Ribbon Week celebration and our community's year-round commitment to the health and wellness of our youth and the prevention of alcohol, tobacco, and drug abuse, as well as violence intervention, now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Irvine does hereby proclaim October 22nd through 26, 2018 as Red, Ri <laughs> Wabbit. As Red Ribbon Week and encourages all members of the community to commit to the health and wellness of the youth of our community and to participate in Red Ribbon Week prevention activities. Oh. Thank you. Let's get a, a photo. And then I'm going to turn the podium over to you because I'm sure you can do this better than me. Can you oh, come on? If you'd like to say a few words. Sure, thank you. Make sure you get red ribbon in I will, I will try. <laughs> thank you, Mayor and uh, City Council members very much. Uh, number one, just for your support of not only Red Ribbon Week, but all of the youth in our communities. We all here appreciate it and value living in a city such as Irvine. Um, as you can see, we have various partners here from IPD. We've got Youth Action Team. Ruby's is one of our partners, the school district, Hogue Hospital, Drew back here. So we really are a coalition of stakeholders in the community that are concerned about our youth. And Red Ribbon Week is just the kickoff to the year of events for helping our kids make good choices, stay healthy, provide parents education, and just overall um, contribute to being a healthier society as long as, as alongside all of you. So Thank you again, and I invite you to go look at schools that are going to be all decorated during the week. Come to Ruby's. We have family night dinners at Ruby's, and you're welcome to come serve milkshakes with the teachers. Um, all kinds of festivities going on around the city, and we really just appreciate all the support. So come, come out and celebrate with us. Oh, and pennies for prevention, which will be right here in your parking lot, October 26th. The whole city raising pennies and money for, for prevention activities. So thank you again. Thank you. So, R Ruby's is involved in, and in a very big way, and, and thank you. I actually had the chance to meet Ruby herself once, and she was as energetic and funny and dynamic as the company that bears her name. So thank you for what you're doing for uh, the Red Ribbon Week and for the city of Irvine. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you all.
I got a signed picture of Ruby in my office. It's actually kind of cool. All right, uh, this will be easier to say. Irvine Public Schools Foundation Giving Day. So at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Netta Eaton, president of the Irvine Public Schools Foundation, along with other representatives that are here tonight, to come forward and join me at the podium. Wel welcome. The mission of the Irvine Public Schools Foundation is to enrich the educational experience of each child in every school by providing programs, raising funds, and uniting the community in support of educational excellence. Here we go. Don't be shy. In 2017, the Foundation's efforts earned them the distinction of being uh, ranked number three in the nation and number one in California by the Carruthers Institute in the Stepping Up the nation's top K-12 education foundations study. On behalf of the City Council, we'd like to congratulate the Foundation on being recognized as a top performing educational nonprofit organization and express our appreciation for the outstanding contributions and educational enhancements provided to our students. Surprise, surprise. I, I have another proclamation. And again, it goes through a lot of the great stuff that you folks are doing. And without uh, reading it all, let me just uh, summarize. And, and the conclusion is, therefore, the City Council of the City of Irvine does hereby proclaim October 18, 2018, as Irvine Public Schools Foundation Giving Day in recognition of its work and commitment to helping ensure a world-class education for each child in every school in Irvine, Thank you, Mayor Wagner. You know, this really is special for us because IPSF was founded over 21 years ago as a grassroots organization. A group of parents got together and founded the foundation. And from uh, that point on to today, for us to be ranked number one in California, number three in the country, and having raised over and donated over $73 million to benefit Irvine Unified School District is truly phenomenal. And it's because of the support of the great community of Irvine and uh, the fact that we're 100% funded by donations, that means there's a lot of great people in this community that have supported us. So uh, this means a lot because October 18th is our founding day, but uh, this fall is our busiest time of the year, and we, have, uh, we will be kicking off our annual campaign, and our goal is to raise $2 million to support the Irvine Unified School District. And with the great partnership we have with the city of Irvine and the matching grant that you've allowed us, to have, uh, we're hoping that everyone in this community contributes. Um, any dollar amount will go a long way. So thank you very much for this. All right, let me turn now to City Manager Rousseau, who will be recognizing Alana Kalakini for 30 years of service to the city of Irvine. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Members. It is my pleasure tonight to honor Alana Kalakini for her 30 years of dedicated public service to the City of Irvine. Alana started her career with the City in 1988 as Community Services Leader 1 for the Community Services Department. For those of you who don't know, number one means you're starting at the very start of our system. Um, from there, she became senior leader, program coordinator, and supervisor, and now she oversees the customer service experience at the Great Park Visitors Center. Now, among Alana's many achievements include her efforts in helping to produce the Inside Irvine publication, enhancements to the city's data collection and reporting on customer service programs, and her work on our Global Village Festival. In her spare time, when we let her have some, Alana enjoys watching the Los Angeles Rams and Anaheim Ducks. She enjoys working on home improvement projects. And according to the notes they gave me, she enjoys hosting parties. We're all going to be invited to the next one. <laughs> Alana's husband, Ed Calacchini, is also a 30-plus year City of Irvine employee. Uh, she is here along with uh, one of her sons, 
who also works in our wonderful park system. So please join me in thanking Alana for 30 years of dedicated public service to the city of Irvine. Would you please join me in recognizing Alana Calacchini. Just to take a moment, this is uh, Alana's son, Dane, has joined us today. So, Dane, you want to put your hand up and say hi? Everybody want to recognize him? Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you and uh, congratulations. All right. Uh, City Manager Russo, is there a report to be made this evening? Yes, there is a very brief Pardon me? Very brief report tonight. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to take a moment to introduce our new Public Works Director, Mark Stoyer. Uh, Mark joins us here. We're very fortunate to have him. Um, he is a star, and uh, just I'm delighted that he was willing to come and join us and continue the good work that's happening at the Public Works Department. I've asked Mark if he would just briefly uh, introduce himself and uh, tell the council and the Irvine public a little bit about his track record. Mark? Uh, thank you, Mr. Russo. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. As a young boy, I grew up in the city of Glendale, and um, I always looked forward to the summer months because I could spend several weeks with my cousin who resided in Orange County. You see, my aunt in the late 1970s bought a home in a new community called Woodbridge in the city of Irvine. Now, this community was quite a bit different than the 1930s track development I grew up in Glendale. Quite a bit different indeed, why only footsteps from my cousin's front door. There was an open, lush grass field that I could play any kind of sports on. There was state-of-the-art playground equipment in, local, in many local parks throughout the area. Uh, there were pedestrian and bike paths that connected one side of the track to the other. There was even a lake that you could fish in, and we used to catch these little bluegill fish, and we'd throw them back. Now, there were some neighbors that actually fried those up in butter and ate them. Now, I never had a desire to do this, but the point was is that this was truly a unique residential experience like nothing my parents uh, or I had ever seen. Well, for the clock 30 years, and I find myself as a city engineer for the city of Rancho Cucamonga. Now, you may not know this here, but folks out in the Inland Empire consider Rancho Cucamonga to be a little brother of the city of Irvine, right? Same decade of uh, incorporation, similar amenities, same ag to development background, right? Well, um, while in the city of Rancho Cucamonga, uh, I often cited, and also in the city of Riverside, I often cited uh, Irvine as being that uh, master example when it came to uh, development standards and planning in economic development. Many of us felt that Rancho should aspire in 10 to 15 years to be where Irvine is today. Well, little did I know, a few years later, I'd actually be given an opportunity to be part of this award-winning, superbly balanced master plan community that is Irvine. I'm looking forward to working with you, City Council, uh, the development community, and the residents uh, to develop innovative and sustainable and cost-effective solutions to constructing and maintaining public works infrastructure. I'm excited to be here, and I thank you for letting me be a member of this great organization. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Starr. Do any of my colleagues have any announcements for the evening? Mayor Pro Tem Shea. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and welcome on board. I'm so glad that you're here, and I was born in Glendale, so we'll have to talk about that. Um, yes, I want to just give an update to the council and to the public in regard to our Farm Bill um, efforts that we've been working on. So I was so pleased that on September 25th, the City uh, Council adopted opposition position to a provision of the Federal Farm Bill that would exempt local pesticide regulations. 
The city's opposition letter was distributed to the Farm Bill Conference Committee and every member of the House and of the Senate. Um, I have also been contacting cities uh, personally across the state and throughout the United States to raise awareness about this small provision in the large federal bill and to encourage cities to submit letters of opposition. My thanks to Community Services Commissioner Kim Conti, who has been making the same requests with her efforts uh, personally to raise awareness. While the original intent was to resolve the farm bill uh, by sept September 30th, that did not happen. But the House is now, because the House is now in recess, and the conference committee is expected to continue the farm bill discussions after the election. So we will continue to advocate that blocking cities from regulating pesticides should be beyond the scope of the farm bill. Uh, more information is available on the city's website, including a video and a copy of the city's opposition letter that the mayor and all of us approved at our last meeting. So we'll keep you updated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I have a couple of announcements real quick. The Irvine Police Department invites the community to its annual open house set for October 20 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Irvine Civic Center. The event will feature tours of the police department, vehicle displays, and a chance to interact with police personnel. Attendees will also meet members of IPD's mounted unit and its canine unit. Bounce houses, face painting, and a bike rodeo are among the many activities for kids at this free event. Guests should park at Creekside High School, Colonel Bill Barber Memorial Corps, uh, a Marine Corps Memorial Park, or the Free Chapel. A courtesy shuttle will transport guests to the Civic Center. A bike valet will be provided for those who wish to ride their bikes to the event. For more details, visit IrvinePD.org. The Irvine Police Department's Office of Emergency Management is coordinating with the Orange County uh, Health Care Agency and South, Al South Orange County Cities to host a point of dispensing exercise at the Orange County Great Park. This event will be Thursday, October 18, from 4 to 6 p.m. The exercise is an important measure in emergency preparedness by simulating how medication and supplies might be distributed in the event of an emergency. The process is easy. Participants have a choice of driving through the POD, as it's called, or walking up. Signs will guide visitors through the short exercise. Free decorative pumpkins will be distributed at the uh, POD as a thank you for participating. Residents will also receive emergency preparedness information specific to their city. More information is available at OCHealthInfo.com slash POD event. And the uh, Irvine Civic Center will serve as an early voting service center beginning Saturday, October 27, through Monday, November 5, including weekends. All registered Orange County voters are eligible to participate in on-site early voting. Additional voting center services include ballot replacement, same-day conditional voter registration, full-service voter assistance, and secure drive-through vote-by-mail drop-off. Visit cityofirvine.org for early voting service center hours. For more information about voter registration and the early voting service center, call the City of Irvine election hotline at 949-724-6159 or visit ocvote.com. All right. That concludes the announcements. We will now go to the consent calendar. And I am going to pull item 3.9 to allow for a public comment. Um, otherwise, uh, for the record, all matters listed under the consent calendar are considered by the city manager to be routine, and all will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no discussion of these items unless members of the council or the public request specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate discussion. Madam Clerk, other than the one I have on 3.9, any requests to speak? No, Mayor. All right, thank you very much. Do any of my colleagues wish to pull an item from the consent calendar? No. All right, I will entertain a motion to approve the balance. So moved. Is there a moved and seconded, and let's vote. Motion carries three to zero with noted absence. All right, I do have item 3.9 and a request to speak from Ms. Sayer, Susan Sayer, who, oh, who is here. Ms. Sayer, the floor is yours. Hi. Oh, and if you would hang on two seconds, I'm sorry. Madam Clerk, if you would read the item. Oh, yes, thank you. 3.9. Excuse me. Measure M2 Comprehensive Transportation Funding Program Grant Applications. Thank you. Ms. Sayer, the floor is yours. 
Yeah, good evening. My name is Susan Sayer, and I'm a longtime Irvine resident. You're proposing applying for grants to fund projects that would serve to have the streets of Irvine accommodate more traffic. Irvine residents are asking for less development and less traffic. What Irvine really needs you to do is apply for grants for projects that reduce traffic on Irvine streets. Transportation Commissioner Kim Montgomery recently requested a future commission agenda item to discuss the creation of an Irvine circulation only municipal bus system that would emphasize transportation to the Great Park. I think this is a good idea as the Great Park attractions will likely generate more traffic than the circulation system can easily accommodate. Not long ago, Council Member Shea stated that she wanted Irvine to promote Shop Irvine. I propose that Irvine also act to promote tourism. Both could be promoted by a municipal bus system. I'm here tonight to ask you to explore expanding the iShuttle program. The system would have stops at train stations, hotels, the senior and disabled housing complexes, high density apartment complexes, community centers, colleges, and universities, and large shopping centers containing movie theaters and restaurants and the various great park attractions. The I shuttle could also provide transportation to special civic events. If such a system is found to be feasible, there should be funding grants available to defray the added cost to the iShuttle program. I ask you to please consider applying for grants to reduce traffic on Irvine's overly congested roadways. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's bring it back to the council. Questions or comments? Um, and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Second. All right, moved and seconded. Seeing no further discussion, let's vote. Two votes. No. I'm sorry, you're going to have to re vote. I apologize. This is Try the game. There we go. Motion carries three to zero with noted absence. All right, thank you very much. All right, um, we are about to lose our quarrel. And I guess I have to apologize to the citizens. We have try twice tried to deal with the only issue remaining on the agenda, and um, despite assurances by colleagues they would be here, they're not here. Um, I have raised this issue with the city attorney, and I will confirm with him we can't do anything including take public comments, correct? That's right, Mayor. The, the, there is no public meeting once we don't have a quorum. Uh, the, the agenda did not include this item. It was merely a consent calendar when uh, uh, Council Member Shea made prior arrangements. And uh, at this point, I reluctantly have no choice but to apologize for those of you who've come out. This issue will come back. Maybe it'll take a new council with folks who are here all the time. Um, but at this point, Regrettably, and I apologize to all of you for you making the trek to City Hall, we cannot continue the meeting and do business. It is 5.13, and I am required by law to adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. <laughs>